Welcome to Canvas Projects, a virtual program offering from the Pflugerville Public Library. I'm Meg Miller, an adult services librarian here with another fun project geared to ages 12 and up for you to complete. Those who registered through the library calendar can pick up their material supply kits. And for everyone else watching, we hope you give these techniques a try. This month's project is a quilt block canvas. Let's start with a look at the supplies being provided. In our envelope this month, uh, you are getting a 10 by 10 canvas with the quilt block pattern already etched on. I did use our library laser cutters um, to make this uh, pattern on there. It was kind of the quickest way. Each one took about three minutes to etch using just a real low power three um, to do the lines on there. Um, if you're working on this project on your own, you could also do something like this with a ruler or um, find a pattern, quilt block pattern that you like, do the trick where you take the, the paper you've printed it on, kind of pencil etch on the back, and then place it on your canvas and trace those lines. Or if you draw straight lines really well, more power to you, that is not one of my skill sets. So in addition to our canvas with the design already on it, um, you are getting a flat brush since this particular design has mostly angles, um, this brush should hopefully be pretty easy to follow those lines. You'll have these little corners that might give you a little bit of trouble, um, but nothing too bad. And then we have six paint colors. Uh, for the most part, I went with a jewel tone for this project. As if you've watched previous videos know, you might know that I'm trying to go through some paints that we've built up over the course of things. Um, so for this particular set, um, I did use this folk art linen as like kind of a taupey beige um, color. And I had a bunch of those from previous crafts. Um, this sergeant, it does say metallic. However, I have doctored this. There was only a little bit of silver left. I added a bunch of gray to it and shook it up. So most likely what you're going to have in your paint pots is just a ba pretty basic gray. Um, I always love to add a little bit of sparkle. Uh, so for this month, I went with a pearl pistachio green um, color to just kind of give a little pop of lightness with some sparkle. And then for our three jewel tones, it's these craft smarts from uh, Michael's, just a hunter green, a navy blue, and then a plum to round out the colors. So I don't have my work surface covered. You could put a piece of something down to protect if you get paint. If you want to protect your hands from the paint, definitely um, gloves or such. Uh, acrylic paint tends to wash off pretty easy for me, so I just go for it um, and work it out later. You may see in this video I was prepping other crafts. I have some other stains on me as already. Uh, you may also decide to use uh, wear clothes that you might not um, have a problem if some paint gets on them or an apron. So I'm going to go ahead and open all my little paint pots. Uh, pretty much this metallic pistachio green, the pearl, um, since it was the smallest amount, you have the least of it. Um, pretty much everything else should be fairly full. I really didn't go through, I definitely went through my jewel tones doing a double coat. Let's take a look at the example I painted. Um, so here is the one I first painted using only this brush. I do try to do these where it's exactly the tools that we're providing in the kits. Although if you've done previous months or have other paint brushes, uh, you may want to find a small round brush. That'll be a little bit easier for getting into these corners of your um, painting. So really your first step when you're ready to paint is kind of figuring out what color scheme you want to use. Um, I did use my jewel tones in kind of the larger areas and did almost an alternate where see I've got the blue facing here, the purple facing here, and I used my greens in the center. Um, and because I love the sparkle, my little extra bit of room spot I have out here, I made that um, pearl green as well. And then my gray and my linen I used on these middle pieces. You see in the cut, 
I actually have lines through these corners. So each of these could be a different color, which I think that might be something I do on this one. So in that case, rather, let's see if I can get both of these in the shot, rather than having this piece here be that solid linen color, kind of, oh, I guess we're here, there. So that's the piece that goes across. I would do half of it the gray. And with this flat brush, it's, like I said, so great, especially in these larger pieces where you're just coming straight across. I don't have to worry too much about making that kind of match there. And I'm going to keep this a fairly light coat so that it dries rather quickly. Um, and then I am going to take and do another coat after this so that um, I get the full coverage. And really that'll take care of any of these lines that the laser's etched on there. Um, you shouldn't necessarily see it through. I think on my example about the only line that stays is this dead center line right here because of these lighter greens. I really, it really doesn't, it, it really isn't covered. Um, so if I come in super close and maybe not even with the shine, um, you can see that little bit of an etched line there. And here we go. So I'm just gonna do that and I'm gonna give this corner on the other side the rest of the gray paint. I'm gonna have to come at an angle here while I do this part because this is where my other line meets up. But I'm gonna kind of, instead of going all the way across and then I'm gonna give this my cream color over here. And then I'm gonna do the same with this. So I'll do these two pieces and then um, I think actually I'll do this other one in other colors. And each time the color choice is up to you and you really can kind of play with this ahead of time, think it out and see how you might like to do it. In the interest of keeping this particular video fairly short, I'm not gonna have you sit with me while I continue to paint across. Now, um, with just the one paintbrush, I could bring in a little um, cup of water if I want to clean between my colors. Just a little rinse of my brush there. Some paper towels here to clean off my brush to be ready for the next color. Or if you um, have other brushes around, you can grab another brush kind of one to a color. That way you don't even really need to worry about um, cleaning between brushes. Just remember at the very end to go ahead and clean your brushes. So here we've got that cream color coming off the other side. And that's a fairly light, so it's something that I might definitely go over. Not, no might about it. I would definitely end up going over that section a second time, kind of letting, like I said, the first little layer of paint dry. All right, so there's that, kind of the big pieces of it, the easy corners. And I am just gonna grab this little round brush so that I can come right into this corner and get right right to the angle and not have to worry about my flat brush doing funky things. And I'm not too worried if I go a little bit over. Um, the darker colors are going to uh, take care of some of those pieces. If like there, I just a smidge past the line right there. But whatever color I decide to put in these sections will really take care of that. You could also uh, choose to do one of the colors as like kind of an accent. So where my, if you do have the small round brush or even a pen, if you wanted to, let's see. I've got just a black fine line marker that I had over here from another project. 
And because I do feel like this piece here kind of washes out, I'm just gonna take this black and I'm gonna kind of highlight those lines there so I get that real breakdown of where my lines are. And now our quilters out there, I'm sure if you've been to the library, uh, you know we have the local Pflugerville Quilt Guild who is um, does a show at least once, sometimes I think maybe more than once a year uh, with those amazing quilts. I'm sure one of them knows what this quilt block is called, but I don't particularly have the name of this quilt block handy. So I'm just kind of going. And so something like that would give you a little bit more um, definition between the parts. Now, because of some of the colors that we, we were chosen, um, between the dark blue, you're not really going to see it, the black pen quite as much. I would definitely wait to do something like this until my paint was completely dry. I wouldn't start it while the paint was wet. I think I'd get a lot of smearing. Um, but we hope you enjoy this project. And as always, um, we'd love to see your final products. And we look forward to seeing you next month in June as we kick off our annual summer reading.